What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the next episode of Dead in Bermuda. My name is Splattercat, happy to have you here today as we hang out for a little while and play this fascinating little survival game which I've actually come to enjoy quite a bit. I like it, I think it's pretty well put together and I'm hoping a lot of people enjoy it as well. So for right now, we needed to assign a couple of things, but at the moment we were dealing with a problem with our fatigue. Now in a real world survival situation where you're undernourished, you're under rested and all that sort of thing, and you're in an environment where you can't sleep properly because bugs are biting, it's too cold or whatever else you're just gonna have to get used to operating under a baseline level of fatigue luckily or unluckily in a video game it doesn't work like that we've kind of just got to sort it out by ourselves let's get her fixed up I think fatigue is still looking really really high on some of these people I think winters can get away with coming over here for a little bit his fatigue is at 43 percent and she leveled up so let's go ahead and level up Julia real fast I think I may develop, so you see because of her higher intelligence, she got 12 skill points. Makes her a little bit more useful in that regard. Her stealth is already pretty high, and so I'm thinking a good idea might be to make her useful for away missions. And so what I mean by that is giving her a high scavenging skill, so that... I mean, it may be worth it to just sort of like... It may be worth it to just bum rush intelligence and see if you can get to a point where it rolls over and you're getting like 30 into you're getting 30 40 skill points per level it looks like at level 70 I don't know if it's linear or how that works let's actually look at somebody else real fast to find out so his intelligence he gets four skill points whereas she gets 12 so it looks like it's not linear because if it were she would get 60 if it's five per, if it's five intelligence per skill point, she would get 60 instead of... So yeah, it looks like it goes up as well the higher it is. So you get like an extra skill point. So I would assume that it's probably like four and some change or something like that that allows you to go up and over. Or at a certain threshold, you just start getting more. Now the downside here is once you apply these points, you can't remove them. And so I can't really like rack this up and see what I'll get out and then put it back down and kind of make an informed decision here. You kind of just have to go with it. Her strength is not so good. Constitution is also not so good. Well. She appears to be reasonably decent at cooking. Unfortunately, the skill is just non-existent. So whereas she has the raw skill to do cooking, she doesn't have the actual material skill. I think I'm going to stick with what my plan was before. I'm going to try and get her better at scavenging, I think. And the reason being is that she's really, really good at stealth. And so for sending her out, I need somebody that can scavenge reasonably decently while at the same time being stealthy and not triggering monsters every single time she goes out to get anything done. I think this, is, this will take a little bit of injury because every time you get attacked, you get an injury. And so we need to like make sure that doesn't happen because we have no way to get rid of it right now. That's a major threat because it's a thing that we can't get rid of. Julia's pretty tired right now, but I'm going to leave her up for one more, I think. Everybody's pretty tired, though. I mean, we've got a... We've got a pretty exhausted group in front of us right now. I'll keep Bob on that for the moment. We are going to need to gather things as well. Did I set up the... So right here we have a tough choice. we got to decide if we want to go for the fruit basket or if we want to go for gathering tools. I think this gives you a gathering tool node inside of your base that you can click that will allow you to go harvest wood or rope or whatever else. Whereas the fruit basket will give us the opportunity to go get food if we want to. So, it's kind of like, eh, rough call. How many harvests does the plane have left? Let me put somebody on the plane real fast so I can figure out how many more times I can harvest this thing. Eight uses, which means that by my estimation, we might be able to get... Mm, maybe 30 more wood out of it, possibly. Sort of depends. I'm going to leave him on there because he's not that exhausted for right now. He's not depressed. So I see no reason to leave him in over there or him in over there. She is, however. I think I might be able to get rid of... Who's like super depressed right now? Not her. You. We kind of have a weird situation in front of us. 
Let's stop research for right now, and we'll put them around the fire and let them talk for a bit. They can become friends and do their thing. Let me check the fire real fast. I'm going to strongly recommend that we use some of this wood to stoke the flames again. Get that back up to 100%. On this side, I think I'm going to risk it, and I'm going to go for the fruit basket. This may be a losing gambit for me, but he should be able to scavenge up a bit more stuff for us to use, I think. With eight more harvests, I think we'll get enough to make the gathering tools after all this. And so I think with everybody placed where they are right now, I'm okay with it. Let's go. So two wood, one rope, four meals. Oops, I accidentally clicked, but we got four, four, and two of the meals. When you click it, fast forwards everything. So anyways, we got four good meals. We got four okay meals, and then we got two of the barely edibles, I think, with some ambiguity in there possibly. So depression has gone down. They should also get a little bit of fatigue reduction. Not much. She got wise, which means that her knowledge skill progresses faster. That's really, really good for her. Fantastic. That means that we have a locked-in researcher now who can basically swap out with the other girl the entire time. Looks like she's typing on her med kit. I'm like, oh, don't worry about it. I'm working on a thesis. Not a big deal. They got along while resting. I don't know exactly how that works. She got an exploration skill, and then she found 3-7 in the jungle, so that'll be okay. She's on death's door from resting, so we need to bring her back in. Anybody that is done, there we go, so we'll swap them in. She should be good for exploration now. She'll get it done all by her lonesome. Fatigue is looking... Eh. I'm going to put him in right here. I think I'm going to let her rest on this one. How are we doing on that research? We're at 23%. Oh, that's not that terrible. I'm going to leave him over on this side, but, I mean, he's pretty tired right now. Do we have anybody else that can scavenge decently well enough? If Alejandro could do this. Yeah, have Alejandro do it. Have him swap back into the fire and just, like, talk with people for a bit and just kind of reduce those things. And then we'll leave him there for a little while. Not for, like, a long while, but can I pull him out? He's still at 31%, so unfortunately, I don't think that's going to be that helpful. Let's just leave them where they're at. I think things are okay right now. We also have new locations we can hit up, so... Oh, God. Talk to the crazy old geezer, huh? So we can search the place. Let's do an inspection first. A strange old fellow is sitting right there in front of you in a meditating, dan or meditating stance. He seems to be as alive as a rock, and he doesn't seem to have noticed you. Or he doesn't care. You notice his pale blue skin and charred long beard. You can't shake the idea of a defrosted crazy Santa. He's a little skinny for Santa, though. He does have the emblem of the Flash on him. Maybe he just went to meditate after his superhero career. Fun fact, where it turns brown right there, not his beard. Not his beard at all. Brutal. That's because it's smoke from the fire. I'm not trying to be disgusting right now, but, you know, there was a joke implied. You can try and talk with him. Who's good at discussing things? She's got 77. So I think that, for her, she's the best call. Let's communicate with him. A human being! So we aren't alone on this damn island. With great expectations, you try to speak to the old geezer. You even scream at him, but nothing will do. He won't budge a charred finger. With your high hopes torn to pieces, you leave him behind, thinking about what you will say to your comrades when the guy starts muttering a litany of random gibberish words. Let's try to communicate. 77 isn't the best chance, but it's good enough. After a while trying to understand the words coming from his mouth, you start to grasp a meaning and enter into communication with him. You sit next to him in the same position and close your eyes. You try to make one with the river of words, and they are now gently flowing into your head one by one, caressing your mind. Like a possessed, like possessed, like you're possessed by a higher force, you dive into a sea of words in your mind, reach the bottom, and pick up three shells. On the shells, you see three words written in blood in an unknown language. Yet you understand them. You get out of your hypnotic trance with the words, the prophecy, find, and love dancing in your head. So her intelligence went up to 35, her knowledge went up to 25, and her depression dropped. That actually kind of sucks. That would have been a lot more useful with somebody that actually uses those skills right there, but it'll increase her skill points, so maybe it'll help out long term. Other things that we can do, it looks like we can search here, and so... My initial... Let's take in, I guess, Julia. She's got pretty good stealth. We better I could take him. Let's go with Julia, I guess. 50-50 success. There it is. 
The old guy has scavenged rusty antennas and steel pikes, but they won't budge. Behind him, you find some bottles full of a translucent liquid. You decide to take them all. He doesn't react. Healing water. Cool. It's a little green for my taste, but you know what? I'm not going to worry about it. On this side, we got a spooky dark corner. You find a hole in the ground covered in tangible darkness. You fear it to be a giant spider's nest. So we can search it, or we can hunt big spiders. Her scavenging is 29. It's not quite where we would want it to be. But her stealth is pretty good. She has a chance. His stealth and fighting are better right now in case something goes wrong. I think I'm going to leave it until I level up a little bit more. I'm going to leave it alone. I'm not going to risk it. We can still mess around with the old geezer if we want, but... If I go over to this side... And I say to explore, she's exploring randomly right now. It looks like we don't really have a choice but to cross the coast. Oh, that's water right there. I thought that it was a valley. Oh my god, it's a crescent-shaped island. Okay. I am dumb as a thumb. I can't believe it took me three episodes to realize that. That's water right there. <laughs> Hence the little wavy. I thought that it, that was like waves for grass or something. I don't know. It looked like it was a grassy valley in the middle, and I didn't notice the little ripples on the sides. God, I feel kind of dumb right now. Let's search that beach right there. That'll be okay. It's acceptable. Once we get a hold of all this, the campfire is still good, right? It should be. How close are we to getting this done? 22%. His fatigue is just so high from doing that, though. It's a bummer. We found two more wood on that side, two more rope. We got two meals, four barely edible stuff. So, unfortunately... It's drying up on that side. He got a crafting skill. He's getting there, but his fatigue is kind of nasty, so I'll have to swap him in on the next turn. His discussion skill went up, which is good, because it's difficult for him to diminish depression like it is for other people. He got a new trait, which means that he has a fishing hobby. He fishes faster. That's good. Three hearts right there. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Everybody's going to rest on this side. She's on the edge of death, so she's going to have to chill over there for a little while. Five happiness from sleeping together communally, rolling around in the hay. Got a new area discovered, her constitution went up, and actually her fatigue is not being affected that much. I question the relevance of using more than one person to explore. So wait, who is this crazy dude with the antennas? Finding another human being on the island so soon. Talk about good luck. Was he even alive though? I didn't dare touch him to take his pulse. There was this strange aura around him. It didn't feel very safe. He seemed to be in some kind of meditation, right? Well, dead or alive, he didn't help us much. I say completely useless. If you let me do my way, I'll have him talk for sure. It's not your cozy, sheltered reality anymore. You have to realize that now. You're going to abuse the guy? Come on, man. What was it he was mumbling about? We clearly all understood the words find, love, and prophecy. It might be a clue to something. <laughs> it's not your dumb fantasy books. It's reality here. The only thing that we know is that we know nothing, and that is the highest flight of human wisdom. That could be our only hope. Still, let's keep on searching the area and check on anything that could tie us to these words. So some people, their depression, actually everybody's depression got a little bit better, so that's nice. However, Ileana and Jacob don't get along, so that's going to be, I guess, well, Jacob's an abrasive person to begin with. And she's got kind of like the optimism of youth going on, and so it might be a jarring experience dealing with one another. Hunger has gone up slightly. We've got a ton of, like, bad food around here, so I figure we'll use that to heal as many people as possible. Or at least get them fed. It only gives you a random amount of sustenance anyway, so... You might as well throw it together. So there it is. With this stuff here, let's go ahead and throw it on out. It looks like it's doing pretty well. The RNG gods are loving us right now. RNGs has got us holding down the block. RNGs answering all of our questions. A website that answers questions. Who would have thought? So water supplies have gone down to 33. The fire's intensity has dropped slightly. Our tasty meals have degraded into meals, and we've got barely edible stuff right there. Hmm. We'll have to find a little bit more throughout the day, but we don't have much of an option here. we got to make this work for us. Jakey boy, I need you back over here crafting. What is your fatigue looking like? It's a little bit high, but 
If you guys could finish the fruit basket on this turn, that'd be absolutely fabulous. Alejandro is doing okay on that side, so I'm going to leave him working on that. Her depression and her fatigue are back down to normal, so let's get her back onto research, possibly. Her knowledge skills are not high, but I really do feel like we can eke something out right here and make it work. His fatigue is looking a little bit iffy, and since he has no conversational partner, let's let him hit the hay for a little while. On this side, is anybody else leveled up? Her fatigue didn't go up that much from finding new locations, so... On this side, we had the spider web right there. Over here on this side, there's a sand castle. The castle is nothing fancy, but it withstood the tides. Are there children on the island, too? I would hope not. If we could search it... This is the task we sent her out for, so let's go for it. Stealth check. She failed. Monster attack. She got bit by a castle snake. That sucks. She got bit by the lake snake. We're not, I'm, I'm just making up shit right now. Either way, the trestle snake. <laughs> you completely destroyed the beautiful sand castle while searching around. You found something, but you're a bit ashamed that you may have destroyed a child's creation. So we got two healing water. Alright, well, unfortunate, but at least we got something out of it. It's a freebie, so everybody should be where they need to be for right now. It'd be nice to pull Bob before his fatigue gets any worse. But everybody else is sort of like doing things right now, so I think I'll leave him in, because next turn we'll have a lot more slots to bring out. Alejandro, plus one to scavenging. We got two wood. We got one rope. We got one meal. Three barely edible stuff. We're hanging in there, but... We definitely need to get this fruit basket done. I think we made the right call because I think we're going to run out of food pretty soon. So the fruit basket has been added to the camp. It will definitely help. We repaired a basket. It will be perfect for collecting nearby fruits. We can assign two characters to the harvest action to pick up fruits. Oh, that will be really, really good. Nice. So there it is right there. Fatigue went up slightly. Plus two right there. I do need them to be on research duty, though, to work on the tools. Although it might not be that useful for right now. We might want to put people on foraging duty and see what they can accomplish. We've got two people who are ready to come out of the bunker right now and feel better. She managed to find 5-7 on the shore. Only gave her a little bit of fatigue. Let's go ahead and have a look at that now. Looks like there's an abandoned raft. We might be able to get some wood from it. We could try to escape the island as well. We can use it to surf. Wow, we got a lot of options. Or we can use it to explore the shore. What skill is that going to take? Fighting and stealth. She has really good stealth, by the way. I hadn't realized it, but her stealth is pretty fantastic. I don't really know what I want to go for right here. And you'll forgive me. I'm getting like a mid-episode stretch. I don't know. You got to have like a seventh inning. When you record all day like I do, you got to get a seventh inning stretch in here somewhere. Let yourself mentally kind of relax a bit. It's an important part of the process. Yuri, Alejandro, Ileana. Try to explore the shore, but I really need wood right now while we're on the subject. Since we have a pressing need for wood... Might not be a bad call. Let's take a look. How much wood do we have right now? We have nine. I think I'm going to scavenge the wood off of it. I think that's the way that I'm going to go with this. I, I, I really sincerely do think that that's our best call. Let's go ahead and... I don't want to explore the jungle right now. What are you going to explore next? It looks like there's rain for it. What is that right there? It looks like there's an island. Wait, how did she get that far offshore? Interesting. Can she explore that right there? Like if we go... It looks like she might be able to leapfrog through the little chain of islands and make it over to there in the next turn. So let's go for that. Meanwhile, on the map, what I'd like to do is let's scavenge some wood off this thing. We need it pretty badly. And so I'm going to send somebody with a really solid scavenging skill. And I'm not going to worry about getting bit by snakes or whatever. We got a monster attack, but his fighting skills should allow us to limit the damage. Maybe someone uses that raft, but you badly need the wood. You hope that its owner won't get angry at you. We got five wood from right there, which is actually going to be enough to put us in the running for the next thing that we can build, which is the thing that allows us to get even more wood, giggity giggity goo. And so obviously you got to have your one wood joke right there. In fact, that'll allow us to do it on the next turn. And so 
that's going to be important for us. I don't want to get stale. I don't want to get stalled out, unfortunately, and hit a point where we can't get wood anymore. If a man can't get wood, what does he have left in life? What does he have left? I ask you. So, anyways, we need to be able to gather wood, and so let me pull. His fatigue is actually looking pretty good. I'm going to put him back on scavenging duty over here. His fatigue is high enough to warrant, perhaps, sleeping. Hers is not. So let's select a new research for us. They're almost at two times efficiency right there. Bob needs to take a little rest break. So let's go ahead and get Bob all nice and napped out for a little bit. Bob. Never liked that nickname. If my name was Robert, I don't think I would go with the name Bob. Gathering tools, unfortunately, we're going to have to wait a turn. So there's no point putting him over here either. I'm going to sit him next to the fire. And maybe, just maybe... In fact, I'm going to give him a coffee cup right now to get rid of some of his fatigue. So there it is right there. That's going to get him 10% down. In fact, aren't you good at foraging or something like that? You're not good at harvesting? Well, too bad. I'm going to need you to do this for me. Who's good at harvesting? She's okay at it. I could actually look at this more efficiently through this menu right here. Harvesting. It's going to be a food skill. So hunting, fishing. It might also be a good idea to give him some harvesting skills so that he can do everything. Yuri's good at harvesting, and Alice is okay at it. Unfortunately, I can't take any of them off their current duties, so I'm just going to leave him here since we don't have an activity for him to do anyways. Next! We got two wood, so that's good. We got one rope, that's going to bring us back up to productive. Barely edible stuff, a first aid mag right there. A little bit disappointing. I assume that at some point we're probably going to be able to set up some kind of... First aid station, maybe? I don't know. I'm going to keep them on research for a little bit because their fatigue's looking okay and they get along, so I really see no negative aspect. Ooh, he got a really good roll on his fatigue reduction. So did he. Oh, my God. They didn't get along the whole time. They were fighting and kicking and screaming the whole way. Got three fruit right there. Awesome. Sounds great. Raised fatigue up a little bit, but you know what? I'll accept it. She managed to discover a new area. We should, I mean, we were in a rough spot right now, but we should be able to do things. You look completely exhausted. During my work as a holiday resort manager, I learned a few things from my employees, especially from the wellness center. Close your eyes. I'll give you a premium massage with no extra cost. Well, there you go. Fantastic. He helped out with her fatigue, which is something I was worrying about, and she got massaged by a sexy man. And so that made her opinion go up giggity giggity goo. Hopefully, I figured that'd make Robert upset. They'd be like, why are you rubbing your hands all over my girl? You want to fight me? Let's go. Battle. We gotta fight each other. Island combat. I'm gonna do the whole song right now. That song was the shit when I was a kid. You'd be at the skating rink and that song came on. You were like 11. It was go time. It was go time. Set you a place at the table. Go ahead and use that real quick to get that down. And then we'll use the last of our meals here. To try to get everybody squared away. Some people are not going to eat tonight because their hunger doesn't look that bad. I might let it tick up a little bit further. Maybe use a fruit on them just to keep it from getting too out of control. Oh, there it is. Next up we go. So people are moody and sleepy. Water supplies are diminishing, so we'll probably want to see to that today. But we are out of time for right now. My name is Flattercat. Thank you for joining me here for Dead in Bermuda. I will see you all later. Hi, do everybody.